Hello, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be going through exporting data from Mocha out to the BorisFX BCC V9 plugins. The BorisFX Continuum Complete plugins have a number of plugins that allow you to import Mocha tracking data into their effects. This means you can get some really accurate tracking for those effects inside various editors and compositors. So today I'm going to show you how to do a screen insert project in two editors. I'm going to show you Avid Media Composer 7 and Adobe Premiere Pro CC. And we're going to be using Boris FX plugins to get that data into those programs. So here we are inside Mocha Pro V3. You can also do this inside the standalone version of Mocha AE V3. So what we're going to do here is track this phone and we're going to put a surface around the corners of this screen here and then we're going to bring that out into the Boris FX plugins. So to start tracking this we're going to have to find a nice area to begin with. And generally when you're tracking in Mocha it's best to find the largest detail first. Now we lose a little bit too much detail here so I'm going to come back just so I can see the edges of that phone on this frame here at 121. So the first thing we want to do is draw a shape around those edges. So I'm going to grab my X-Spline drawing tool up here and we'll just do a very basic shape around the edges of that phone. So we can be quite rough here, just like that. So once we have our shape, I'm just going to adjust that a little bit up there. Once we have this shape, we can then go ahead and start our tracking, but there's one more thing we have to do. We've got this big reflection inside the middle of our shot here, where the screen is reflecting the actual cameraman in the background. So what we want to do is actually draw another shape to cut a hole out of this mat. If we turn the mat on, you can see it's currently covering the entire shape, and we really don't want it to see this middle part of the shot. So I'm going to go to the Add X-Blind to Layer tool and I'm going to draw a, another shape to cut out the middle part of the screen. So I'm just going to smooth that out there and I'm just going to let's turn on the brightness level up here so I can see a little bit better and I'm just going to refine that to get as much uh, that information as possible. I'm just going to go into the edges slightly so that we can get just the edges of that screen to help the planar tracking data. Because the planar tracker data is looking at all of the texture information for the phone, it's good to give a little bit of the edge of that screen just to tell it that this is part of the plane that we can use. But we want to get rid of that main reflection going on in the middle. Finally, I'm going to set up the surface so I can see how my track is going. So I'm going to turn off the mats, and I'm actually going to turn off the layers as well so I can see a bit better. Just turn that off there. And I'm going to turn on the blue surface up here, and also the grid, because the grid is an extension of the surface that lets me see a bit better what's going on. So we'll turn that on. And I'm going to put the surface corners to just outside the edge of this phone. So I'm going to come in here, right onto those edges, like so. We'll just make sure that's adjusted well. Now the reason for doing this is twofold. One, it's good so that you can see how your track is going. And the other reason is because when we export our data, we need to define the surface area that's going to be exported for the corner pin. And we're probably going to have to do a little bit of adjustment of this surface after we've done the track because we've got quite a fuzzy shape here and we may get a little bit of drift, especially towards the end of that shot. So now we have all this lined up, we can come down to our parameters. I'm going to turn on perspective because there might be some perspective going on in the track. And I'm going to ramp up the minimum percentage of pixels used to about 90. Now this is going to slow down the track a little bit, but we need as many pixels as possible because we don't have a lot of texture detail to work with here. So we're telling Mocha to grab all of this information uh, and use it to your advantage, which will slow things down a little bit but it'll give us more accuracy. 
So let's start tracking forwards. I'm going to stop the recording for a minute just so that you don't have to sit through the track, but we'll be back in a short moment. Okay, so that's the end of the track done, and we can see a little bit of drift going on in here, but that's understandable given the amount of data we lose towards the end of this shot. So we're going to tweak that in a minute, but first of all, I'm going to finish off tracking here. So I'm going to come back to my original endpoint, and I'm going to start tracking backwards now. And I'm going to stop the recording again, so you don't have to watch this part of the track as well. Okay, so we've finished the track now, and we just need to now tweak the final frames where we saw that problem at the end of the shot. You can see it just wobbles a little bit off there. So to do this what we're going to use is the adjust track module inside Mocha Pro or Mocha AE if you're using that one. So I'm just going to come back down to the end of my shot where I started that original drawing of the spine and I'm going to just scrub forwards and start to see where that drift is happening and you can start to see that edge really coming apart down here. So I'm going to go back to my draw frame which was 121, and I'm going to switch over to the adjust track. And this will set a master keyframe to tell Mocha this is the reference frame I want you to use when adjusting the track forwards. So now I'm just going to move forwards and try and find where the optimal point for that drift is happening. And I'm going to stop about there where I can see the four corners of the screen. And you can see down here we've got four corners in the nudge tools. And this is to help us line up where those shots should be. So first of all, I'm going to look at my bottom left, and I'm going to try using the auto to realign that. And I'll just push it down a little bit to make sure that it's setting where it used to be on that original reference frame. We then just click the bottom right here, and I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to click auto, and that hasn't quite found where it wants to because it's a bit fuzzy. So I'm going to actually manually adjust that. I'm going to move it over back to that corner. And I'm going to do the same for the top right. So I'm going to click that, auto. Didn't quite find it, so I'm going to manually adjust that to about there. And we're going to do the same for all of these corners until we feel like we've got a good fit for where that tracking data is supposed to be. Now it's still going to be using the tracking data, but what this is doing is put a layer of animation on top to just adjust where it's supposed to be. And we can already see that's a better fit rather than the drift that we saw before. So now that we've adjusted our track, the only thing left to do is actually export it out to the Boris Effect plugin data. So we can either export it out from the adjust track page or we can go back to the track page and export the tracking data from there. So I'm going to click export tracking data and we have a range of export options in Mocha Pro and you'll see a few inside the Mocha AE V3 as well. But what we want today is the Boris FX BCC corner pin. We also have one for the center point, which works out the four corners of the surface and generates a center point from those four corners. And this is really useful if you want to track in things like flares and motion blurs and things like that. But in this particular case, what we want to do is use the corner pin because we want the four corners to define the screen image into the applications we're exporting to. So once we've got our Boris FX BCC corner pin uh, selected, we just click save. And then we save that out to where we want it on the system. So I'm going to call this screen underscore corner pin BCC. And we'll just save that to the desktop. And now we can move over to the various applications that Boris supports. In this particular instance, I'm going to start with Avid. Okay, so here we are in Media Composer 7, and we've already got our clip sitting on the timeline. And so what we want to do is add an insert to this screen now. So I'm going to create a new uh, video track. And with that one now in there, we can add our insert to the top. And let's just view that. So now we have our insert in place, we can now apply our corner pin to this video track. How we do this is we switch to our effect mode and we come up to tools and load the effect palette.
So with that open, we can see a range of BCC effects, and in this case, what we want to use is the BCC Match Move category. Under this, we have BCC Corner Pin, BCC Match Move, and BCC Witness Protection, and I'm going to be using the BCC Corner Pin plugin to load in that Mocha Corner Pin data. So to apply the effect, all we need to do is drag the corner pin straight down onto our video track. Now we can close up that palette, and you'll see that we now have the BCC corner pin inside the effects editor. Now all we need to do is tweak a few settings and apply the mocha tracking data to the effect. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set the background to the first below so that we've got that V1 track below our V2 track. And then we want to come all the way down to the motion tracker. And I'm going to load that down. And there's an option here called tracker data import export. So we'll select that and we'll go to tracker data load. We can then go to the desktop where we saved our BCC effect. And we're just going to open that. And you'll immediately see that tracking data applies into that window. So if we now scrub back and forth, we can see that that Boris effect is now applying the motion tracking data that we tracked inside Mocha and immediately applying it to the insert on our V2 track inside Avid. And it really is that simple. It's a very, very quick process to go and load that BCC V9 plugin, adjust the background, and then just apply the tracking data through the motion tracker dropdown and load in the information. So now that I've shown you how to do that in the Avid plugin, I'm going to switch over to Adobe Premiere Pro and we'll go through how it works in that program as well. Okay, so here we are inside Premiere Pro CC and we've already got our track set up in the view. So I'm going to throw in that insert just like we did inside Media Composer 7. So we've got that sitting in the top of our view now. And now we just need to apply that effect. So we're going to come across to Effects. And we've got all of our lovely BCC9 plugins sitting here. So I'm going to come down to BCC9 Match Move. We're going to select the corner pin effect and drag that on top of our insert. So the interface for the plugin inside Premiere Pro is slightly different to the one in Media Composer. So let's go to our background option here and choose Video 1 to get that background. And then we're going to come down to the motion tracking parameters, scroll those down, and we'll use the load button here to go to our desktop and load the effect. And that comes in just as quickly and loads in that corner pin tracking data from Mocha. Now we can do some final tweaks here just to make it prettier, and we can do the same thing inside Media Composer. So what we want to do is come to our composite inside the BCC corner pin plugin. And I'm going to use the apply mode as screen because we want to put this into the shot a little bit better. And I'm going to adjust the opacity down just a little bit, like so. So that just sits better in the shot. Finally, we've got kind of a harsh edge going on here and we really want to soften that up. So I'm going to come down to the edge width and just soften those corners a little bit. We don't want to get it too much because it'll look too harsh. About there. And we'll soften it up just slightly. So I'm going to make that edge softness just a bit smaller. And that just tweaks it in a little bit. It's, it's enough to make it fit that screen and make it look like it's sitting in the shot a bit better. So little tweaks like that really, really help to make it look like it's sitting well with that corner pin data from Mocha. So that's how to get the Mocha tracking data into BCC V9 plugins inside Premiere Pro and Media Composer 7. If you want more information about the BCC9 plugins, you can go to the website at borisfx.com and go to the Continuum Complete section of the website. For more information about Mocha Pro and Mocha AE, you can go to the Imagineer website at imagineersystems.com. You can also check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash imagineersystems. This has been Imagineer Systems Product Manager Martin Brennan, and we'll see you again soon for another tutorial.